Hi, everybody. Mike, Jessica Castilleja. We're going to come back and talk to Jessica in a minute. Uh, before I do that, I wanted to go over and share a few resources for you. Today is Monday. I, just as an aside, I find Mondays really weird because, like, I don't know if I'm supposed to work today, but I really don't want to. Um, I'm, like, grooving back into, I think I had, like, two tasks that I did today. Don't follow me for adult advice. All right, I'm going to share a few resources with you guys real quick uh, before we talk to Jessica about how she's uh, coping with the madness. So uh, first thing I wanted to share, this is from the My Case blog, and I think Nikki did this one. Nicole Black, yep. So Nikki Black did this one, and she's doing interviews with different people on finances, uh, and I thought it was a pretty good... Um, uh, a pretty good breakdown of, they're talking about software stuff, uh, different software choices that you can make during this time. So it's it's useful. Uh, you guys take a look at that. This I thought was really cool. Uh, I'm gonna use Bob Ambrogi's article about it. So Fastcase recently purchased uh, Next Chapter, which is a bankruptcy project management -y tool. Um, and so Fastcase has created this thing called Bankruptcy Week, where they're going through and just teaching people how to do bankruptcy. It's a pretty thorough, uh, it makes a lot of sense for them because they're they're trying to get people to use this tool, but they're doing a pretty thorough, this is how you do bankruptcy. I don't know that I love the idea that bankruptcy is going to be some exploding area and so everybody needs to jump on bankruptcy. I'm not sure that I quite agree with that, but um it people will there will be demand for it whether they have money to pay you or not uh if you want to learn this as a skill that you might want to use later uh, or if you think that this is a practice area that you might want to shift over to that is there finally in sort of crappy news uh, i don't know if you guys saw this um but uh there's this scene of uh, Stiller, of um, Jerry Stiller died today, apparently, or at least it was announced today by uh, his son, Ben Stiller. Jerry Stiller is one of the funniest people. He was George's dad on Seinfeld. This is a moment on the recording of Seinfeld where he kept making Julia Louis-Dreyfus laugh hysterically, which just makes me laugh. I, I would also share with you Zoolander because I find it hilarious and it's one of the best movies that is totally stupid that I've ever seen. And I would encourage you guys to go watch it because Jerry Stiller deserves it. He's a funny guy and he will be missed. So those are the resources for today. I'm going to switch back over to Jessica and we are going to have a conversation. So Jessica, I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself. Um, largely what we've been doing, Jessica, is just having conversations about what people are doing, right? Uh, what are they trying? What's working? What's not working? What kind of results are you seeing? So any of you guys who are watching, as always, you can post comments below, questions, just let us know if you've tried any of this stuff and what you're doing. So let me start just sort of big picture, Jessica. You are in, did you say Southeast Austin? No, Southwest. Southwest, Southwest, Southwest Austin. Austin. Mm -hmm. And you have been a solo for less than six months. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess uh, right Right before all this happened, uh, the shelter in place um, launched launched a law firm. <laughs> I, I went virtual to begin with, just so I could be home with my kids and save on costs and all that kind of junk. Um, but the traditional networking kind of went out the door, right? Because I can't really take people out for coffee or lunch anymore. Um, so it's been a interesting. Had to get creative, you know. Can you not in Texas? I I don't know because I haven't been in Texas for a little while. But my I've got family members who are in the restaurant business, and my brother was telling us that his restaurant normally seats like two hundred tables or something, but right now they're allowed to have like twenty six. So I guess Texas has opened up some. Uh, yeah. Not that I would go brave a super long line at a restaurant just to take an opposing counsel out to lunch. That sounds really boring. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really uh, ready to to venture out. Although I do have a haircut <laughs> scheduled. <laughs> I do not, Jessica. Uh, so so, and you've done. You practiced initially because I I think the first time we virtually met was like a little over a year ago when you were going to the your first the last live lawyer forward yeah. event uh -huh. in Austin. Yeah. 
And you had just started uh, with a firm in Kyle. And were you doing all family law at the time? Family and traffic tickets at the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All the fun stuff all right the fun out of law stuff. school. Yeah. yeah. And so since you've started your own, you've been doing mostly family, I assume, as well. Mostly, yeah, mostly family. I actually started my practice to get out of family law, um, but I kind of kept getting pulled back in, you know, like that. Just when I thought I was out, <laughs> they pulled me back in. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I've been doing family law, and it's been kind of word of mouth, friends and People who I actually had a couple of people reach out to me from previous clients that I had had referred me out, so that felt kind of like, oh, wow, I actually. <laughs> yeah, and you <laughs> were telling me before. I, I think it's really interesting. Um, so you and I were talking beforehand about a conversation I had with a gentleman today who was trying to figure out: Am I the expert type? Of, do I want to build the super nerd firm and it's me and I'm trying to scale me as much as possible, uh, capture me and whatever. Um, or do I want to build like an empire? Do I want to be the solopreneur type who is making decisions, not stuff? Like I'm not doing law stuff. I'm yeah. I'm I'm trying to build this machine. And I think it's interesting because especially with traffic tickets, obviously, that is a really hard you know, if you decide that's a, a service that you're gonna sell, that's really hard to do without having to grow really big. And even family law, the only family lawyers I've seen who make money are the ones who, you know, kind of grow really big. They they scale yeah. out and they do that traditional, I've got 10 associates and we're doing these high dollar divorces and whatever. Um, but you were telling me earlier about trying to switch practice areas and you've made some progress with that. So tell me, yeah. what yeah. are you trying now? What's what's changing in your practice in this moment? Mm -hmm. So I actually had some really great connections with when I worked with uh, the Texas legislature, I worked in the Senate and in the house. And so we did a lot of um, legislation for uh, law enforcement. And I, you know, you had talked previously in, in another, uh, I think live stream about social capital. Right. And, and I kept thinking, crap, I don't think I have any social capital. I'm such an introvert. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but I actually got reached out by the executive director of this organization to, he remembered me from working with them and, and he, I have a background in doing labor and employment in the construction field. And so he, they're launching this new project relating to COVID-19 and death law enforcement and death benefits being denied because of it and kind of what else are, is law enforcement out there experiencing. So they kind of want me kind of on the front lines there taking in the intake and kind of figuring out what's going on. Are we in a position where we can start forming, you know, a basis for lawsuits, forming legislation for the next legislative session coming up at the uh, beginning of next year and really kind of Digging into, you know, workers' compensation, the few kind of statutes that really uh, apply to law enforcement in Texas. And so I'm, I'm really excited because it's kind of that nerdy stuff that I really. I yeah, really I was going to say, do you but, think yeah. is this do you think this is you pivoting to a, a thing that will cash flow in the weirdness and this is nice to have and then I'm going to do the next thing? Or is this can it seems like you've sort of come back to this a couple of times. Is labor law stuff, is that an area that's interesting Lab to you? Oh, yeah. Labor and employment. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I would say most, mo mo mostly the policy, the legislation right. part of it is kind of really what really kind of gets me going. Yeah, um, I know some employment lawyers, and it's it that is a practice area that you can get in the churn with really quickly, right? Like where you just have to take another case and another case. And it's this, because I think all that stuff is, uh, you're trying to collect attorney's fees or whatever. So you're, yeah. you're yeah. taking them, I don't know if you call it on contingency or whatever, but you're, you're taking them with the promise of future attorney's fees. And so you're sort of on this wheel where you have to keep taking on cases. But I, I think if you're probably, if you're able to be the super nerd in in a pretty niche area, like I deal with, you know, city issues or police issues or yeah. whatever, and you can get super nerdy, you might be able to build a sort of a nerd, you know, expert foundation for yeah. that. I don't know. I mean, I'm hoping it is like that launching pad to like, oh, 
Jessica knows about this. Jessica's the one to call. <laughs> so right. I, I'm hoping it turns into that and less of a, I guess, less of a legal services practice and more maybe kind of like a consultancy, like what you were, we were talking about and, yeah. and maybe doing the lobbying and the legislation um, that I really enjoy doing. And I kind of envision maybe having to do scale back a little bit on divorces and maybe only taking certain things and so that I have more time to kind of devote on that, but kind of have something that's going to be a money maker in the meantime, kind of a deal. Yeah. Money. Money. It's always the, you got to, you know, put money a roof over our head. So <laughs> annoying. Um, well, and it's so interesting because like in this, I was having a, <laughs> this conversation with this guy and I was like, the question is, what are you willing to put 10 years into to get to the point that it's really working? And he was like, nothing. I don't have 10 years to wait. I said, okay, but here's the bad news. Everything takes 10 years, whether you want it yeah. to or not. There's there's a 10-year build, whether what you're trying to do is build this audience that you control or you're trying to become the super no. I mean, you can make money along the way. There are ways to monetize along the way. But to get to the point where you're just like, hey, you want to talk to Jessica? You're going to wait in line, okay? Like to get those <laughs> benefits of expertise, you got to be a known expert first. And that's... You know that's a build, um, and so it's 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 tough when I talk to lawyers about this because I'm like, you're gonna have to go through go through the slog, and and people yeah. will come to me about because I have more of an audience focus. That's sort of how I operate. They're like, well, you've built an audience. I'm like, yeah, it's been seven years, and I'm just now figuring out how to build a business around that because I've stopped practicing. Like, it takes a long time to build an asset driven firm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, you got to stay alive in the meantime. So it's kind of, yeah. <laughs> divorces <laughs> it is, I guess. But, uh, yeah. so what do you plan to do? Um, I know you, I would lead you a little bit, but, um, this will come when you read the book, but have, what's your sort of next step to, to get to the point where you feel like I'm imagining right now, if you were to paint the picture of who this, super labor nerd expert is that you see yourself as being obviously you see yourself not there right now you you know you you're gonna feel like a faker when you start these things you feel like an imposter you're gonna feel like oh know. yeah well i felt like that already going <laughs> taking my bar exam and going into this field yeah well yeah. especially these early ones because you'll be pricing it out right and yeah and they'll be like so tell me about the service and you're like Making crap up off the top of your head. <laughs> yeah. You're like, well, we're going to do the true review process, capital T, capital R, because we do this all the time. And, of course, you just made that up in the car on the way over uh, and faked a price out. But, like, what do you, do you have a plan for or have you thought about how do I bridge that gap between where I feel now and where I want to be yeah. Yeah. with this super nerd business? You know, you know I, mean? I, I guess I'm kind of – just going with the flow right now and hoping it becomes like at this moment, like right now at this moment, it's like kind of just this organic process that's evolving. Um, I, I think, uh, I think some of it's going to be how I change up my marketing for sure. And how I market myself because everybody who I know and who like in my circles and everything like that, they're, they know Jessica who does divorces, right. Or child custody. That's what they know. And so I think that's going to be one of my first steps, just maybe changing my marketing and, and well, and what's cool about yeah. it is I'm thinking the people that you're talking about, that will be the social cap, you know, the team that, that you sort of build around yourself to feed you work. This is sort of a very different crowd, right? Like you're not, I mean, obviously, depending on how you build an, a labor policy firm, whatever the freak you call that, um, your customers are not the same as not I'm, tr totally. I'm yeah. trying to get a divorce from somebody at church, right? Like, so you can sort of have two personas as you gradually shift to the new persona, and it won't really get in the way of the other one, um, I would assume. Right? Yeah. No, that makes that makes sense. So... You know, I haven't thought that far out, you know, it kind of just all happened like it it's, all it's 2020, like in the last 48 hours. So. We're making crap up as we go. It's 2020. And sometimes <laughs> I feel like that may be the best we can do. Um, so on the personal side, I was curious, you're 
You guys have, uh, I think you said you have a new baby, yeah, ish. Yeah, we have a six month old. Yeah. So, and, uh, does yeah. that make you angry? You know, because all the, I, I'm a bad parent. We'll we'll put that up. <laughs> we're all bad. We're all uh, bad. Parents. We'll just make a crib up. But I I I think if I had a kid, a young child, even though I know all the reports say young kids don't get this thing, if I saw one report on CNN, I'd be like, lock it the freak down. I'm assu- are you guys pretty locked down? We've been locked down since like March 15th. Like we kind of had a feeling this was going to hit and we pulled our kid from the last day of school and before spring break and we limited our groceries, going out to the grocery store, that kind of thing. So yeah, we've been on lockdown. Nice. And and we were starting to feel a little kind of better about things, but then this article came out about kids getting it and yeah, totally it Shutting scared that, me. Yeah. Shutting yeah. that shit down. Um yeah, is this your first child is in the side? No, I have a Okay. A f- uh, almost 4-year-old and a 2 and a half year old. You gradually Trust by the fourth kid, you're just like, sure, go play with knives, whatever, <laughs> right? Like, eventually, you get to the point you're a little more lax with it. I remember my wife always jokes that, you know, when you're not a, you don't have kids yet, you see those people in the grocery store with their kids screaming, you're like, that will never be me. And yeah, by the time yeah. you get to your fourth kid, you're the one picking the pacifier up off the ground, oh, yeah. licking it clean. <laughs> And then giving it to the kid. That's where we got by that point. We were just like, just eat the candy and stop screaming. That's all we want. Yeah. Um, but are you guys, you, you know, you're, are you ordering out for groceries? Are you going out? I'm just curious on the yeah. life side, how are you sort of cooperating or uh, adjusting to this thing? Yeah, we did a few ordering out delivery groceries um, and a couple of trips. We've made a couple of trips. I actually went to the grocery store for the first time in like a month on Saturday and, uh, you know, had to wear the mask and they're doing the social distancing and letting like one person in at a time. Um, but yeah, we've been doing that ordering out, but you know, really, it didn't really change our lifestyle a whole bunch with three little kids. You don't really get out much anyway. You know, the only downside is they're not, they're not in school. And so that's kind of trying to keep them busy all day. It's funny you say that because we were driving into our neighborhood today and I said to my wife, thank goodness our kids are all teenagers. I couldn't imagine having to entertain a four-year-old right now or a six-year-old or a seven-year-old. Like, I just I just don't think I could handle it right now. And here you are handling. So well done. Lots of, lots of TV time. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, guys, will you just play more Xbox, please? Just – yeah. Just shut it and go play more Xbox. They're like, but I have schoolwork to do. No. Stop <laughs> doing schoolwork. And stop you go talking. Play the Xbox. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't need to know it. Well, cool. I appreciate you hanging out. And to anybody watching, you know, the purpose in these conversations is to sort of just talk through this stuff. Every, you guys are not alone. We're all dealing with the same thing. We're trying to figure it out. Um, I want to thank you, Jessica. If people want to get in touch with you to learn about this well-trod path, Shifting from family law to labor consulting. Labor consulting, <laughs> policy consult. I don't know. You know, I, I really liked Barry's sessions because they felt like, hey, it's okay to like <laughs> figure it out. Make you crap know? up like, as we go. What's a good way for people to get in touch with you if they want to connect? With you? Um, so my email, uh, Jessica Renee R E N E E cast at gmail dot com. Cool. Yeah. Um, are you on the Twitters, by the way? I am on Twitter. I okay. just signed up. Twitter, I think, thinks I'm a Russian bot. They won't let me. <laughs> you know what me. it is? We're too good looking. That's what happens when what really when yeah. gorgeous people like us get on Twitter. They're like, this can't be real. Uh, yeah. This is what happens. So yeah. uh, I was going to say, just follow me on Twitter. At Mike Whalen Jr. It's the same as my Skype thing. The reason I say that is... The Facebook is really good for tactical, here's what to do. Twitter is really good for doing therapy out loud. And this feels like a really good time for saying some really weird things out loud. So that's a good spot for it. Uh, Thank you. And you guys remember all week you can ask Nick and I for terrible advice using hashtag ask twinsies. And on Sunday, we will give you awful advice. We'll see you guys again tomorrow. You guys be nice to each other and have a good night. Thank you again, Jessica. Bye. Thank you.